Hi guys, Ray here from City Fan TV. Hope you're all doing very well. Uh, I am uh, doing very well, and I'm joined by Colin Savage. And I hope you're doing very well as well. Yeah, Colin. I can't complain, Ray. Yeah, oh. fantastic. Obviously, you know Colin. He's a big City fan. Uh, King of the Kipax writer. He used to be a City Matters member. Uh, and uh, he's a football finance expert. And we're going to talk football finances today. We are going to talk about Newcastle United and Manchester City. Now, unless you've been living on the moon, you, you would know that Newcastle have got new owners who've pumped a little bit of money into the club. And Newcastle are doing rather well um, this season. They're up, in, I think, currently sitting uh, fourth uh, spot. Uh, it's a long way from what was going on last year with uh, under Steve Bruce when I don't think they got a win for the uh, under his tenure for about nine games. And we're going to look at FFP now. We've heard some ridiculous statements by uh, Mr. Klopp was one of them who said they've got an unlimited ceiling into what they can spend. Which you and I, as um, as uh, sexy accountants, we both know that's a load of rubbish. So I just want to get your thoughts as to um, how Newcastle are going to do their um, their chase for that top four and then the challenge for the title and how that's going to be different to what City did and, and some of the obstacles that Newcastle are going to face uh, that City didn't. Well, well, obviously, the biggest obstacle is uh, when our takeover happened in 2008, FFP didn't come until 2011, so we had... Three years, well, we'd actually have two years because we didn't spend much in 2008, but summer 2009, summer 2010, we, we kind of threw a lot of money at, at, at the team. And of course, we got fined um, by UEFA because um, we, we'd ex breached our FFP, maximum allowable loss. Newcastle have come in in a time when FFP is well established. Uh, and in fact, as we talked about before, there's going to be a change in FFP. So Newcastle have got to be much more careful. However, um, one of the advantages of them being quite frugally run by under Mike Ashley was that they, they reported profits. Now, um, FFP works on profits. So it's not just the, the bottom line profit, but you can add back certain items of expenditure. So Newcastle um, actually carrying quite um, a big potential reserve forward that they could spend against. Uh, without breaching FFP. But of course, the owners can't just pump in money as they did for you know, two, two and a half years with, with um, our owners did with us. Um, so they've got to be much more, um, they, they, can, they can put the cash up, but obviously they've still got to meet FFP, which we didn't have to the first two or three years. So, so that's the one problem they've got, uh, but they seem to be doing quite well at the moment. So, so they've got to be much more careful about who they buy, how, how much they spend. Now, the, their problem comes potentially when um, FFP changes. And as we've already talked about, it goes, um, it, it moves away from looking at the last three years' profits to looking at a comparison of wages and amortisation against revenue. Uh, now, in some ways, this is a more sensible system. But in other, in other ways, it's going to restrict clubs like Newcastle who don't have the revenue base currently. So we built that revenue base up. I think when, the, when we were taken over, our revenue was something like uh, 80 million, something like that, 70, 80 million total revenue. Now it's six, this year it should be over 600 million. Uh, maybe it was a bit more than that, 80, 80 odd million, I'm not sure. But... Um, but we built it up, but obviously regular um, appearances in the Champions League, that, that's probably the biggest factor, um, huge increase in commercial revenues. So, um, you know, I, I, what is this, our 10th, 11th consecutive season of the Champions League? We've been to semi-finals, we've been to a final, uh, and we get a huge amount of money for that. Probably, I don't know, uh, we've we maybe earned nearly a billion say, uh, 800 million, just purely by our Champions League appearances over the last few seasons. So um, Newcastle have got to build up that. They've got to get in the Champions League. They've got to stay there. And to stay there, they've got to be in the top four. Um, but they haven't got the commercial revenue yet. You know, I think their, their total turn, when Klopp was whinging that Newcastle had unlimited finances, um, that Liverpool's 
uh, Newcastle's turnover was 140 million. Liverpool's was 600 million. Yeah. So it's, it's, the advantage. It's a stupid, absolutely stupid thing to say. It can be easily debunked. So, you know, Liverpool's turnover is over four times Newcastle's at the yeah. moment. So, so Newcastle have got, because of this new link between wages and amortisation and revenue, because they've got that low revenue base, um, Newcastle, um, unless they can increase that revenue base by getting into the Champions League and doing well there, Newcastle might struggle to um, buy in the way they even they might have done under the current version of FFP with their accumulated profits going back a few years. Yeah, I mean, obviously, if 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 that's going to be an issue, then if that's a worry, then you, they've got the uh, a, pro, a potential problem. I don't see this as a problem. I'll hopefully, we'll talk about some solutions. But they've got the problem of keeping players. Bruno Guimaraes. Uh, I'm sorry if I messed up his name there, but you know he's he come to the Premier League. He's he's uh, playing like a house on fire at, at the moment. He's, he's you know and. There's lots of talking uh, from lots of journalists uh, that clubs are interested in him and that they want to, you know, there's some ridiculous talk that, that was it Liverpool wanted him for January. I mean, that's that's just pathetic. It, it's just made up stories and we, we know that. Um, but there is that risk that lots of clubs come knocking on the door and say, we'll give you 100 million for him or talk to his agent and say, Look, mate, you're on 150 grand a week. Well, we'll, we'll give you 300,000 a week. And however much you like a place, and I think from uh, looking at lots of uh, uh, stuff on social media, he loves being a Geordie. He loves uh, the adoration and uh, adulation from uh, from from the uh, fans, and he doesn't want to leave. But at some point, money talks. Um, so is, is that a worry, or can Newcastle use that to their advantage and actually sell the player for a hundred million, make six, whatever sixty million profit, and use that to continue their drive forward? Yeah, yeah. Well, I was just going to say that if um, their turnover was was 140 million, um, if if they if they sell him, uh, if they make a 70 million pound profit, I'm not sure what they paid for him, but they make a 70 million pound profit. That's 50 percent of their turnover. Um, so yeah, that, that's another way of um, uh, balancing the equation, the, the new equation for FFP, you know, wages and amortization on one side and uh, turnover, profit on sale. You know, it, it's a it's a, it's a, a risky a it's, free yeah. hit uh, increasing their uh, available pot. Yeah, but it is a big risk as well because what yes. you want to be doing, if you want to get that Champions League and sustain that Champions League, you got to keep your best players. You can't be selling your best players, and you know you you'll, you can look at teams like Southampton who are languishing. And then you look at who they sold in the last seven yeah. or eight years, and you think, wow, what a team they could have had. You they know, sold that four team, yeah, in the last few years, haven't they? Yeah, you know, just having just imagine having Van Dyke and, and Mane back, yeah. uh, it'd be a different proposition in, uh, almost overnight. Um, so, but the other way, uh, and, and maybe we people haven't looked at this or thought about it enough yet, is I mean, you've touched upon it is the way that Manchester City's turnover has gone out of this world. Now, you, we go back to when we were taking over. I know the, the numbers were, I don't know the pounds numbers, but there were 104 million euros was our turnover in 2008. So going back then, we're looking at about 140. I think you, I'm trying to work it out now, probably about 130 or 140 to the pound. Uh, um, so... Hi. Before it, 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 you know, it sounds, it sounds yeah. right. I think we had done a year or two before that. I think we had gone over a hundred uh, million. Uh, we were actually people don't understand or, or, or believe this, or when they say City were in the we were in the top twenty earners in the world football teams. I think once we were seventeenth or eighteenth before uh, Th Earth Action Sinuacha took over, or around that time, we were. I think 17th or 18th in the top 20 in the world in world football. So, you know, we were on some metrics, we were a big club. You know, you've got that fan base, you've got the turnover. Um, but like you say, we've gone from let's say 80, 80 to 90 million up to what we are now, 600 million in the space of 12 years. It's phenomenal. Uh, 82 million. There you go, 82 million. So it's a phenomenal increase. 
that's where I see Newcastle's potential is. You know, yes, you can argue that they haven't got this global fan base. Well, neither did City, if we're honest about it. Um, and if you went back to 2005, when you look at fan bases, you know, Newcastle were still selling, you know, 50-odd thousand seats. So I think they've got, the obviously, the local fan base and, and their global fan base will uh, in, increase. And the sponsorship deals will increase. And I think that's where... Um, they're gonna. That's that's the biggest area that they can catch up on. You know, if they're turning over whatever 140 million now, you know, if in three years' time they're turning over 300 million, that makes a huge difference into who they can buy, what they can afford, and then, like you say, they'll get in the Champions League or, you know, or, or finishing high in the Premier League, getting a lot more money coming in, and that's just like a rolling stone. It, you'll get more more exposure. If you do get the Champions League, you'll get more exposure all over the world. New sponsors coming in and it just carries on like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, it's a bit of a catch-22 because you can't get in the Champions League unless you spend money. But you can't spend money unless you're in the Champions League. You know, yeah. it's... Um, uh, but, you know, what what their owners should do is what, what Sheikh, Sheikh Mansour Abu, Abu Dhabi did was leverage the power of the commercial relationships they not just pumping money on themselves but leveraging the power of the commercial relationships that they have all over the world to gain garner sponsorships Hayes, i know um to handle the recruitment for the um the national oil company owned by which is chaired by Sheikh Mansour. you know we have partnerships what why are nissan there because we have a partnership with them uh, via yokohama marinas which which i think they own Large, oh, they're the majority. Well, we, we, we have, a, I think, a 10% stake in York. Or, uh, that or 20, I can't remember. Yeah, small stake. You know, you, you look at the, you look at our commercial partners, and there's many of them. Um, and probably a lot of them are there because we have the leverage to get those partners. And I'm sure um, the, the Saudi Public Investment Fund can do the same thing uh, and, and still stay. Within FFP, of course. Yeah. Um, well, there's this talk of uh, the naming rights deal for St. James's Park being been yeah. £300 million over 10 years. Yeah, yeah. That, <laughs> in one failed swoop, solves, I think, this year's for any financial problems because £30 million is probably, uh, off the top of my head, the amortisation and all the players they bought and a lot of the wages. Mm -hmm. Uh, and and that, yeah, why? Because we have to do it more slowly, more cautiously, um, more carefully than we did. But yes, they can. They can get. And you can see at the moment, you know, this club with a turnover of 140 million, Eddie Howe's hardly a, you know, a, 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 a Guardiola or a, you know a Conte or, uh, yeah. but a fantastic job with the players he's got. And um, yeah, if they do get a top four place and get into the Champions League. You know, you're looking at potentially increasing that 140 million turnover. Well, uh, you know, but by, by, by finishing 10 places higher, they're, they're looking at another 30 million. Getting in the Champions League, they're looking at another 50, 60 million. It's, um, you know, so, so, you know, get the sponsorship. So they could easily double their turnover. I think, I think one, two, 280 to 300 million is, is what they'd be if they, yeah. Uh, and then that becomes the platform for, you know, further in, in the same way that we did, you know, further yeah. um, expansion in the revenue base. Yeah. Uh, and there, uh, interestingly, um, Newcastle fan um, said something about. Oh, oh no, there was an article in the uh, Northeastern Chronicle, uh, which I know the club were a little bit annoyed about, but it basically said we don't want to turn into Manchester City and. You know, high prices. Well, we're not the highest price by any stretch yeah. of imagination, uh, outside, even outside London. But um, Newcastle ticket revenue is about 24 million. Yeah. You know, similar size stadium to ours. We're not the best and we're pulling in just under 60 million. So you think, you know, Newcastle fans are going to have to pay for their success, literally. <laughs> and, and if they want success, they're going to have to pay for it. They're going to have to double their ticket revenue. Um, and, and the fans won't like that. Yeah. But, you know, it, it's all 
it's another 25 million potentially yeah. in the coffers. Well, if we ask more, more City fans, I think, if you ask more City fans from 2008 uh, and now who, who are still going, is it worth paying the extra money to, for the success we've had? I, I would dare say more someone would say, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And if, in, but I, I, and I think the Newcastle fans will be the same. You, you, if, you, if you tell them, look, we're going to be playing Champions League football every season, you're going to win the odd cup or two, we're going to be challenging for the league title. But your season ticket price is going up 50%. I think that they've got fifty percent overnight, but not overnight, but over the next three or four years, yeah. I think people would, you know, probably be willing to pay for that success. I'm going to put myself throw, throw this out now. I'm going to put my uh, um, head on the line, neck on the, on the chopping block. I reckon if Newcastle get Champions League football, um, that within two two to three years, their turnover will be £400 million. Uh, I, I, I would say probably more five to six years. But, you know, well, if they get regular Champions League football, I, I think it would take them five years to, 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 to have a, to, you know, to, to seriously move their revenue base to that sort of figure. I'm, 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 I reckon 15 to 20 million from the fans, 100 million from finishing the top 100, possibly 120 from filling, finishing in the top four and getting in the Champions League. So I'm looking at best part of 150. That yeah. gets you that gets you basically to 300. Yeah. And I reckon they're going to get some new the sponsorship deals. The sponsorship deals uh, will bring in a, a shed load because they're going to get that high profile. They're going to get bigger shirt sponsors they're going to get bigger kit deals you know i, I can't remember what they're kit kit yeah, it's... peanuts and now i, I, I would say I'd be looking at a five-year horizon for them to be getting towards 400 million yeah because uh, we don't know what's going to happen with the premier league yeah deals do we in future yeah but i i, I reckon 400 million within three years if they get champions league football next season and possibly the season after yeah. uh yeah, uh, I, I I put me a, a stand out there to be shot down, but um, you have to wait two or three years to shoot me down. Of course, you know, there's always a danger of a team like Newcastle getting Champions League football. Uh, and this is one of the why I thought that they were always so reluctant to have a go at the Cups because obviously that's automatic um, qualification for European or like Europa yeah. League, of course. But and I always felt they didn't want to do that because that takes a that takes it out of your squad. Yeah. And, um, you know, the squad that they had in, in, in those days, under Reich Ashley, if they're playing in the Europa League, mm -hmm. potentially, that, that's games they've never played before. Yeah. You know, they've gone out the Cups the first round or, you know, a couple of rounds. It's games they've never played before. And um, it, it will impact their, it would have impacted their league form, which was, you know, patchy at best. So, and I remember when we, uh, that that famous game when Robbie Fowler had his penalty saved by Mark Schwartz. So if we, if if he would converted that, we'd have gone into Europe. I think we'd have been relegated the next season. We didn't have the squad. It's, it's a lot out of you. I mean, I've, I know I should have said this at the start of the of the, of the uh, video, but it we because we but we mentioned it in a in a previous video about I think we were talking about uh, probably about um, about football owners, but as a city fan. Are you jealous of what's happening at Newcastle? Uh, are, are you worried about what's happening? Uh, you know, do you think, oh no, we we're now one of the big buzz. Let's pull up the drawbridge. Or uh, do you welcome no, it? I, no, I, I'm really pleased for Newcastle. Uh, it's nice to see competition. Uh, I, I mean, yeah, from a partisan point of view, uh, uh, or a tribal point of view, Newcastle are doing well. Hits one of the others. Yeah. You know, it hits. Liverpool or Spurs or Chelsea or United or Arsenal. Hit us, could hit us. Um, yeah, so, so you know, if Newcastle get top four, someone misses out, um, and so that's great because the way it stands at the moment, we aren't going to be the ones who miss out. Uh, of all the of all the so called top six, we are not. Uh, we are the least likely to miss out to, to be impacted by their success. Yeah, you know, Spurs, Arsenal. United, Liverpool probably all got more to fear. Maybe Chelsea should be okay, 
but all the others uh, 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 will be the ones looking over the shoulder or up the table. Yeah. And, um, I, I, you know, that's, um, it takes them out of the game, doesn't it? You know, it, 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 we've seen with Arsenal, I mean, they, it, it's taken them a while to get, um, in the, well, still not in the Champions League, are they? So, um, they, they might be this season, they might not be. Uh, next what, what happens is if, if you drop out of the Champions League for two, three, four seasons, you, it's a big job to get, yeah. Absolutely, and that's what it's taken. It's taken Arsenal so long to, and it's been a really tough road. And this is the first season that they showed really, uh, and, and towards the end of last season, yeah. and this season they showed that they can be up there again. But it's taken them a long time. You know, uh, who knows how long it'll take United to to, to get uh, back into uh, the promised land for as long as possible. Yeah, well, that's another good welcome sign, uh, thing for Newcastle. Well, yeah, so so so. It, it, it's nice to see another club do well because, of course, uh, one of the factors, common factors that links Arsenal, Liverpool, Chelsea, United, they're all American owned. Yeah. So, again, it's another kick in the teeth for an American owned club <laughs> doing well. Uh, uh, I, thought, I, th I thought you liked America. I thought you're a big American oh. football fan. <laughs> uh, funny enough, I'm over in the States next month for uh, Thanksgiving. And the day after Black Friday, well, the Black Friday is the England USA game. So right. hopefully, you can watch it there. So that, that would be interesting. It'll be interesting that that World Cup, uh, Iran, oh. USA. That'd be a game and a half, won't it? Well, I mean, yeah, <laughs> that'd be one worth seeing. But um, yeah, so so yeah, no, I, I, I'm delighted for Newcastle. Uh, you know, it's um, it's about time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it, you know, it shakes up the complacent, established. American owned cabal that, that currently, you know, inhabit that, you know, m most of the top six. Now, Spurs, not really American owned, but Joe Lewis lives in the Bahamas, so it's close as damn it. Um, and we know they're, they're, they're kind of phil philosophically and politically aligned with the American owned clubs. Yeah. So, you know, to, to knock one of their noses, noses out of joke would be fantastic. I tell you, that's a great way to finish talking about the uh, the cabal of American owners. <laughs> I'll remember that for a few days. Colin, it's been lovely to talk to you today. Oh, that's good, right. And uh, I hope uh, the City fans and possibly some Newcastle fans who've watched this video uh, will enjoy what they've seen. And it would be nice if you guys could subscribe to the channel and give us a thumbs up, thumbs up even, if you like what you've seen. Thanks a lot, Colin. Cheers.